Whenever he stepped forward, the child screamed. She was inconsolable despite his attempts to comfort her. Blankets flew off the bed as she kicked them. When he put his finger over her mouth, she bit him. His eyes were fixed on the screaming child as he winced in pain. Nighttime routines with her were a pain for him, but he loved her so much. Keep watching to discover what happens next. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more stories. In his early 40s, Matthew Otis lived a quiet life with his wife Anna and their six-year-old daughter Jane in the small Los Angeles suburb of Sunrise Valley. Laughter, bedtime stories, and shared adventures had always been a part of their unbreakable family bond. As a fog hung thick over the Otis household, tension hung thickly in the midst of the sudden distance that had grown between him and Jane. Matthew, a dedicated father, was baffled. Like an old rope, their bond had frayed. Once they were inseparable, having once enjoyed playing with her father, Jane now retreated to her room, preferring the privacy of her own space. An unsettling change began to take root. As the days passed, the idea of being with her father, once a source of joy, now made Jane want to run away. While pacing around the living room, Matthew glanced at the clock anxiously. He used to enjoy spending time with his daughter, Jane, like she was his little shadow. In recent months, however, they had developed a mysterious distance. It was once her playful companion, but now she recoiled at the mere idea of their usual activities as father and daughter. Her father's demeanor seemed to be off-putting to the child. Jane's compassionate mother, Anna, who worked night shifts at the hospital, noticed the growing distance between Jane and Matthew. As a means of mending the growing gap between father and daughter, Anna suggested that father and daughter participate in a variety of activities together. Despite her father's threats, Jane's response was always the same, a high-pitched cry followed by frantic running. Despite the growing distance between Jane and her mother, her mother was a caring and attentive nurse who tried to bridge it. Despite her efforts, her daughter did not want her father around her. When Jane's mother tried to engage her, she would scream and cry and flee from her mother's attempts to engage her. Bewildered Anna decided to take matters into her own hands. After observing her daughter's behavior, she organized a game night for the family one evening to try to ease tensions. Seeing the board game spread across the living room floor, Jane's eyes widened with fear and she ran upstairs, refusing to play. It was the final straw. Jane screamed piercing screams when Matthew tried to tuck her into bed that night. I want mommy, I want mommy. Tears streamed down Jane's face as she cried with a mixture of confusion and hurt. In his eyes, Matthew stood at the doorway, looking at Anna, perplexed and saddened. The same thing happened every night this week. The child had been affected by something, but what? The routine continued throughout the night. It was exhausting for the mother to wonder if it was just normal behavior for a child to exhibit as they grow up. However, the situation seemed more complex than that. Overwhelmed by night shifts, Anna tried to comfort her distressed daughter every night. Mommy, mommy, Jane would wail, rejecting any comfort her father could offer. Jane seemed to be acting like a spoiled brat, wasn't she? The screams of Jane echoed through the house whenever Anna attempted to bridge the gap. The situation was becoming more and more problematic. Despite Anna's best efforts, Jane would not go to sleep until her mother tucked her in, screaming for her mother in the middle of the night. Having already received two warnings for being late to work, she was showing up late to work. One evening, after weeks of this distressing pattern, Anna sat down with Matthew in the dimly lit living room. Matthew, we need to figure out what's going on with Jane. She's terrified of you, and I don't understand why. Her husband seemed uncomfortable and shifted in his chair. He looked down and rearranged his black formal shirt in a more comfortable position. He was always a very prim and proper man, and it sometimes annoyed Anna. Matthew, visibly upset, responded, I don't know, Anna. We used to be so close, and now it's like she's afraid of me. I've tried everything to reconnect with her. Anna stared at her husband. They were together for 10 years now, and for the first time, she felt like she didn't know him at all. How could she mend their relationship? Determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, the couple decided to talk to Jane. 
Matthew was hesitant, but the child was still wide-eyed in bed, sitting on the edge of her bed. They gently asked, Sweetheart, why are you scared of Daddy? What happened? Matthew held his breath, waiting to hear what his child would say. Jane hesitated, her wide eyes flicking between her parents. She was visibly tired, but she knew that something was wrong. Finally, in a trembling voice, she whispered, He's not Daddy. He's not Daddy. At night, her words hung in the air, shrouded in confusion. She covered her face with the blanket and laughed. Anna and Matthew exchanged worried glances. What did she mean, sweetheart? Anna asked, her heart pounding. Matthew started perspiring. Jane, her eyes filled with fear, pointed towards the closet. He comes out at night from there. He's not daddy. He's a monster. Was there someone else in the room? Or was it just a child's imagination? The room fell silent as Anna and Matthew exchanged a glance filled with shared terror. Anna's mind raced, and she wondered what mysterious presence haunted their home, causing Jane to fear her own father. As the suspense lingered in the air, Anna couldn't shake the chilling realization that something darker was unfolding within the walls of their seemingly peaceful home. She was late for work, concerned and puzzled. Anna decided to take action with her night shifts as a nurse, leaving her little time at home. She installed a baby monitor in Jane's room to unravel the mystery. That night, she made a stop at the hardware store and picked up a second-hand monitor. She had to install it quietly, as Jane was busy playing and her husband wasn't home yet. That night, as Anna prepared for her night shift at the hospital, she decided to take a more discreet approach. She installed a baby monitor in Jane's room, hoping to catch a glimpse of what was troubling her daughter. Later that evening, she watched the live feed on her phone and saw Jane pointing and crying at Matthew's shirt. Anna's heart raced as she observed the inexplicable terror in her daughter's eyes. As the night unfolded, Anna observed through the camera as Jane pointed and cried at her father's shirt. Anna couldn't understand the reason behind this strange behavior. When Anna returned from her night shift the next morning, she found Matthew had already left for work and the laundry was neatly done. Suspicion gnawed at her, and she examined Matthew's shirt, clean. Perplexed, she waited for Jane to return from school, hoping the child might shed light on the mystery. Jane, however, struggled to articulate her fear, only managing to express that she was scared of Daddy. Anna sat in the kitchen, staring at the laundry that was neatly folded. She held Matthew's shirt, finding it spotless everywhere, she was sure of what she saw. Jane returned from school, but her attempts to explain her fear of her father were incoherent. All she could articulate was that she was scared of daddy. The worried mother couldn't pester her child anymore. She had to do some digging of her own. Determined to unravel the enigma, Anna decided to play detective. That night, she feigned illness and called in sick to work. I'll definitely feel better tomorrow she lied to the hospital matron. She waited in the dimly lit garage, hidden in the shadows. Matthew's car pulled into the driveway. The tension grew as she listened to Matthew and Jane's evening routine. That night, as Anna prepared to tuck Jane into bed, the screams for her mother echoed through the house. Night after night, Jane insisted on Anna's presence, creating a rift between father and daughter. Anna, Desperate to uncover the truth, checks the baby monitor in Jane's room, hoping to catch a glimpse of the mysterious source of Jane's fear. She was just about to confront her husband when she heard a loud bang from inside the house. Horrified and filled with a surge of adrenaline, Anna rushed into the house just as Matthew left Jane's room. He was going to start a load of laundry right there and then. The mysterious stains now adorned his shirt undeniable evidence of something deeply troubling. What happened, Anna demanded, her voice laced with anxiety. She pointed directly at his shirt. Matthew startled, stammered, I don't know, Anna. It's just that something strange is going on. He covered his hand over his shirt and tried to change the subject. As Anna interrogated her husband about the inexplicable stains, she felt a shiver run down her spine. The suspense hung in the air like a storm waiting to break. Why was he lying to her? 
The night was heavy with tension as Anna, exhausted from her night shifts at the hospital, decided to investigate the unsettling behavior that had taken over her home. Matthew, her husband, and Jane, their six-year-old daughter, were no longer the close-knit family they used to be. Jane, once eager to spend time with her father, now screamed and ran away whenever he approached. Anna had tried to bridge the gap, but the child's fear persisted. She walked towards her husband, but he stepped back. Panic surged through Anna as she burst into Jane's room, demanding an explanation from her husband. She confronted him about the stained shirt, demanding to know what had happened. His response was chillingly simple. Nothing. The room felt charged with suspense as Anna confronted Matthew, who remained tight-lipped about the mysterious stain. Swiftly, Anna ran after her husband, demanding an explanation. He kept trying to get away from her. He didn't want her close to him. Anna grabbed her husband's shirt and pulled him close. He tried to get her off, but her hands were strong. She held him tight and ripped his shirt buttons open, determined to unravel the truth. Anna inspected his stomach and discovered a deep cut, a sinister wound concealed beneath the fabric. She covered her mouth with her hands. Anna's eyes widened in disbelief as she noticed a large cut on Matthew's stomach, blood seeping through. She started crying, realizing that her husband was badly injured. Desperation clawed at Anna's chest as she pressed him for answers. Who did this to you? She begged him, but Matthew didn't want to say. Matthew reluctantly revealed that he had been mugged a week ago but kept it a secret to protect them. He reported the incident, but the authorities had been unable to find the perpetrators. Was he telling the truth? As Anna attended to Matthew's wound, a sense of unease settled over her. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. I'm worried about you, she told her husband, her mind racing with questions, wondering why her husband had kept such a dangerous secret. How well did she really know the man she had been with over the past 10 years? Anna felt stupid that as a nurse, she didn't pick up any of the signs. She questioned her job and work. She didn't want to leave Jane alone with Matthew anymore. The red stain on his shirt was not just a result of a random attack. There was an ominous mystery lurking beneath the surface, casting a shadow over their once seemingly ordinary lives. That night, as Anna lay awake in bed beside her husband, she couldn't shake the uneasy feeling. The last 10 years of her life were a lie. Her mind raced with questions, and she wondered what had transpired in the darkness of Jane's room. She would have to take some leave off work to figure it all out. The unsettling mystery left Anna pondering the unknown, her thoughts shrouded in an unsettling blend of fear and uncertainty. She couldn't sleep that night with Matthew and his lies right next to her. She had been struggling to come to terms with the traumatic incident that had shaken her world. It had been several weeks since she discovered her husband, Matthew, deeply injured in his stomach after being stabbed. The fact that he had not told her about the incident had left her with a deep sense of unease, and she couldn't help but wonder if there was more to their relationship than she had initially thought. As a result, she decided to take her daughter, Jane, to see a psychologist. She hoped that the professional could help Jane work through her own emotional struggles which had become increasingly apparent over the past few months. Jane had been exhibiting behaviors that were unusual for her age, such as becoming distressed and crying whenever she saw her father. The psychologist, with her gentle and empathetic demeanor, began working with Jane to uncover the root cause of her distress. Through several sessions, however, there was no significant progress or result. Jane remained tight-lipped about what was bothering her, and Anna began to worry that they were not making the progress they had hoped for. Consequently, Anna decided to take Jane to see another specialist, hoping that a different approach might be more effective. However, Jane refused to speak up about what was in her head. Despite Anna's best efforts to encourage her, Jane remained silent, leaving Anna feeling frustrated and helpless. Anna knew that she had to continue to support her daughter, even if it meant trying different approaches. She decided to seek out a different type of therapist, one who specialized in working with children who had witnessed traumatic events. As she was struggling with her own demons to understand what was going on with Matthew, 
who seemed distant and cold after that night when she found out that he was stabbed, Anna kept monitoring their home through the security cameras, hoping to uncover some clues about his strange behavior. However, despite her vigilance, nothing new was revealed on the footage. Matthew's actions remained a mystery, leaving Anna feeling increasingly frustrated and concerned. She couldn't help but wonder if there was a connection between his behavior and Jane's fear of him. The enigma of Matthew Otis lingered, casting a long shadow over their once happy family. What should the lonely nurse do for her daughter? The revelation hung heavy in the air, the room suffused with tension. Anna, torn between concern for her husband's safety and the emotional trauma her daughter had endured, grappled with the tumultuous mix of emotions that enveloped their once peaceful home. As the night unfolded, the shadows cast by secrets began to dissipate, leaving a fractured family on the precipice of healing. How would Anna ever be the same after this? What do you think about Anna's story? Do you believe Matthew had something to do with what's going on with his daughter? Have you ever experienced a situation like this? Share your thoughts in the comments section to let us see your perspective on this dilemma. Make sure to turn on the notification bell for more stories. Until next time.